In this episode of our secondhand 79 build, we fit the tray and canopy to the vehicle, install the 12 volt package from Red Arc, finish bolting on all the other accessories, and reveal the final cost and mods list of our most exciting project to date. Now, we aren't here to bullshit the numbers, so keep watching for the true cost. After journeying down the production line, the train canopy made its way across to the fitting shed. Here, Rob and Jaden began the process of bolting the tray down and fitting the canopy on top. Adding the tray and canopy to the back of the 79, we knew we would come across some basic maintenance issues, and we in fact found a couple of points in the rear end that will have to get rectified before the long distance trips next year. So you haven't seen much of me on this build, but I'm gonna run you through some of the stuff that Spares Box has come to the party with and uh, some of the upgrades and bits and pieces we put onto the car to bring it up to spec and tour it out. As you can see, the color has changed, so we've probably already told you what color it is and what's going on the back, but I'll run you through some of the stuff. So we've got the 300 mil DBA slotted rotors. It came with a J-Max brake booster kit already, so we thought it needed some uh, stopping power. Uh, we've got braided lines. They're gonna go in this afternoon. They're J-Max ones to suit the four inch lift. We'd swapped out for a Safari Air Max uh, snorkel. Basically, it came with the standard Toyota one. We wanted to go to a bit more high quality spec. The other one was starting to break up. As you can see, it looks heaps chunkier. It's uh, going to have massive airflow, uh, airflow through that snorkel. So we'll end up getting a little soft for that, I think, once we head out to do some of those trips out west. Uh, internally on the engine, we had a few leaks and bits and pieces that Harry's run you through already. Yeah, so we had a rear main leak on it and we had rocket cover gaskets as well. Uh, the guys at Spares Box have hooked us up with a whole heap of gaskets and uh, bits and pieces to sort out that sort of stuff. So the boys are uh, changing out the bearings. The axle seals were leaking. They had um, diff oil in the wheel bearings, so you know they're pretty shot at that point in time. So. The one thing I am stoked about is it has the superior uh, four inch lift in it already. Uh, I was a bit worried that it wasn't gonna take the weight as well or handle as nicely on the road. I took it for a little run yesterday before we stripped all the brakes and everything out of it. Uh, with the new tray and canopy package, it doesn't even come close to what that steel tray weighed with the stacks and the old school canopy that it had on it. And it, it's sitting really, really nice. And it's gonna flex up pretty good for a 79, I hope. Um, other than that, it's got the remote resis and everything, so the guys have just set them all up nice and neat in there, bolted them off the back of that trundle drawer using some of our extrusions, and uh, it's, it's coming up pretty neat, hey. Um, when the guys did the respray, they gave it a full check over for rust and made sure that the chassis was all in good nick. Everything there was schmick, so we were stoked about that. There was a little bit in the roof in the top corner where I don't think they glued properly uh, when they put a windscreen in at some point in its life, but other than that, the, the thing, it is pretty tidy. It's definitely had a life, but um, it's gonna hold up just nice. With the train canopy now sitting on the vehicle, it was passed over into the capable hands of Dan from DMF Auto Electrics. Dan handles all of our auto electrical installs here at Mitz Alloy. Now working out of his own shed, nothing is too hard for Dan or the team. I'm a local auto electrician based in Mayfield in Newcastle. I've been in field service for approximately three years and things have really boomed. We specialise in new vehicle fit-outs, predominantly caravans, canopies, anything off-grid, solar, lithium, yeah, we do it all here. The boys from MIT started this Land Cruiser project and from the get-go I wanted to be in on it. So together we designed this Red Arc system that's fully capable for off-grid living, um, everything from your lights down to your induction cooktops. This unit will even power your coffee machine. There really isn't much it cannot do. Halfway through the install, Hayden from Red Arc dropped in to check out the progress and have a chat about the capabilities of the power system. So this system is tailored towards those who are going out remote areas, um, doing trips around Australia, or just want to get the most out of their battery system in general. So the guys down at Mitz Alloy, um, they've decided to go with our premium package, the Red Arc premium package, consisting of our Red Vision system, uh, 2000 watt inverter, and our manager, manager charger. Um, this all kind of coupled together is kind of what we would class as our premium package, generally aimed at those who are wanting to get the most out of their scenario. Um, that coupled with two uh, revolution batteries and uh, it's quite a powerful system, also with 150 watts of solar on the roof. 
One of the key features with the Red Vision system is being able to control everything via an app. The app is a very user-friendly system, which means you don't have to get out of your cab to be able to turn your lights on or off, and also to see the actual health of your battery system as well. It's going to give them a real insight into their battery and how it's performing, so you never get caught shy of uh, having not enough power. With the electrics installed into the canopy, we set about putting in the rest of the electrical accessories. Given the height of the cruiser canopy is slightly larger than say a Hilux or a Ranger build, we managed to squeeze a 130 litre Bushman's upright into that passenger side. Our slide out pantry and single drawer and table combo complete the living side of the canopy. Up top, we have our 12 volt travel buddy for cooking the party pies and roasts on the way to camp. Over on the driver's side, our drop shelf adds extra storage space up high for things like chairs and fold up tables. The space below will remain open for now to accommodate all our camera gear and personal items when we're away on the trips. The options we selected in the cruiser train canopy had to strike that balance between touring practicality and advertisement. This means when it comes to displaying our full range of product offerings, we've decided the upright fridge and associated kitchen layout was one we wanted to test for customers to have a look through. If you were to get this exact train canopy package from us with the same options, identical paint, powder coating and the same internal layout, you'd be looking at $29,380. When it comes to the 12 volt system, Red Arc offer a premium Australian made product with outstanding customer backup and quality control. When you pair that with a Revolution battery bank, you have a robust system capable of running just about anything. This exact system installed will set you back about $11,550 installed into one of our canopies. The extras in the canopy, like the fridge and travel buddy, add an additional $1,449 and $299 respectively. Driving around on the same tyres the cruiser came with for the first couple of months was sketchy to say the least. We got on the phone to Sandon at Bowers Suspension right here in Newcastle to see if he could sort us out with some rims and tyres at short notice. We initially fitted some 35 inch BF Goodrich KM2s as we'll be doing plenty of highway kilometres, but actually ended up changing them out for some Kumo muddies for the next trip on the central coast. All up, the rim and tyre package cost us about $3,000, but given the amount of terrain this vehicle will see, we needed to make sure they were perfect and they're well worth the investment. We actually managed to move on the old tyres, so that offset some of the cost. The majority of the remaining accessories we put on the Cruiser came from our mates over at Spares Box. Well, as soon as I heard Harry and Tim and the boys up here at Mitz were building a sweet single cab 79, I could not be involved. I immediately jumped on the blower, got in touch with the guys, went through the Spares Box catalog and picked out a plethora of different bits and pieces that we could bolt onto this thing. Uh, you're talking, we're talking winches, snorkels, we've got roof rack coming, uh, we've got brake upgrades, uh, we've got all sorts of business for this car and I've got to say, it has turned out, I mean, oh, look at this thing, it's an absolute weapon. All of the spares box accessories came in at 4,165 and all the other external bolt-ons like the clear views, reverse light and additional work lights added an extra 1,164. Nisha and I spent a couple of Arvos completely sound deadening the cab and installing a set of old XR6 seats I had from a previous vehicle. These went straight onto some Hurricane fat brackets and we wrapped them up with a fresh set of Razorback seat covers as they were looking pretty tired. All up, these additional cab internals, including the Red Arc gauges and pillar pod, came to 1,606. At the beginning, we set ourselves a pretty ambitious challenge to see if we could build a 79 series for 80 grand, which was the average purchase price we hear that our customers are quoted when they visit the dealer. This was always going to be a big task to come in at that cost, so we're pretty stoked with the final price coming in at 99717 It's important to remember that this price also includes the paint, which we mentioned was something that really didn't need to be done, but as this is a display vehicle, we wanted it to stand out and look fresh. We could have easily powder coated the canopy doors Land Cruiser white to match the factory colour and saved over $8,000. This would bring the total cost down to approximately 91717 which is only 10 to 15% more than we initially budgeted for, which we feel is quite common across many of the builds we see. We often see it become a question of, well, we're doing this, we might as well now do this as well. We didn't want to compromise on quality and we would rather pay once and get it done right from the very start. It has still come in well underneath what a new 79 series would cost with the same accessories. With all that said, we're stoked with the final build price, considering the extensive mod list, which can be found in its entirety in the description down below. Let us know if you enjoyed the series by leaving a like and a comment below as well. Be sure to subscribe so you can check out the upcoming shakedown trip I'm about to take the 79 on in our back Victoria. 